In this video, we're going to take a look at what is called problem abstraction. So as we mentioned already, abstraction is a generic concept, but there are specific forms of abstraction that you might be asked about in the exam. In the last video, we looked at procedural, functional and data abstraction. In this video, we're going to take a look at problem abstraction. So first of all, what is problem abstraction? Or can also be referred to as reduction. It's where you remove details from a problem that you want to solve until you can represent that problem in a way that is possible to solve because the problem is now being reduced to one which has already been solved by some other means. Now, this can all be a little bit confusing to get your head around when you hear that statement. So let's work through a real practical example to see exactly what I'm getting at and what problem abstraction reduction is. OK, so let's explain it with this problem. Imagine you have this puzzle presented to you. We have a knight piece from a chessboard starting here in position one. You have to find the quickest or shortest route to it to move in a valid way from square one to square 11. Now, if you're not aware of chess, there are rules as to how the piece can move. It is an invalid move, for example, for the chess piece simply to go to square four, eight, and then 11. Chess pieces, uh, knight chess pieces, must move by going one square in one direction and then two squares in another, or by two squares in one direction and then one square in another. So you can see here this, for example, would be a valid move. The point is, these are the three squares where the chess piece could currently end up, not at 11. Now, at this point, you could say to yourself, OK, so let me just try and figure this out. Um, how about I go to 7? OK, well, from 7, I could then go up and across and up at 5 and then I could go down by 2 to 12 and along to 11. That seems to have worked so I've got a route there. Is that the quickest route? How can I be sure? The bigger this board, the more squares there are, the more confusing it will be. You'll probably find yourself backtracking, repeating squares and also not being sure which route you've taken. But we can perform problem abstraction on here to find an answer. So we can start turning this into a graph. From square one, a valid route is to square six, nine, and seven. So from square one, a valid route is to square six, nine, and seven. And then from each of these squares, we have a number of valid paths. And we can start to make this sort of diagram here. So here you can see we've started to apply abstraction. We only actually care about the valid routes the chess piece can take. So we've mapped that out here, and you might recognise this. It's a graph data structure. But we can take abstraction one step further. We don't actually care about the actual physical location of each of these squares in relation to each other. We only care the paths that allow you to get from any particular numbered square to another. We can perform something here called graph unfolding to turn this graph into this. Now this is instantly a lot easier to see. For example, it's very simple now to see that the quickest route to 11 is just to whiz around the outside. Now, it doesn't actually matter whether we go 7, 5, 11 or we go 9, 3, 11. The point is we can see it's much quicker than taking either of these routes through the centre. So, what in essence is our problem? Well, if you remember, our original challenge was to find the quickest route for this knight chess piece from square one to 11. Now I've presented this information in a graph and unfolding it. So essentially what we're saying is our challenge is to find the shortest path or the quickest route between two nodes. Well, hang on a second. But this problem has already been solved. Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm is a coded algorithm which already 
exists to find the shortest path or quickest route between two nodes of a graph. So, by removing details from our problem and abstracting it down to this point, we have discovered that it's now possible to solve because the problem has been reduced to one which has already been solved. And of course, this algorithm can be used to calculate the shortest route between any two points, not simply in this scenario, but in many related problems using graphs.